Hey everyone, I'm Jesse McCollum, brand ambassador for Everlast. We're gonna go over setting up your AC balance on your Everlast machine. All right, today we're gonna be running this demo on the Everlast 255 EXT. The only thing we're gonna change today is our balance. All the other settings are gonna remain the same. So let's run through those real quick and show you what we're working with. So we're on 090 material. We're gonna, we're gonna set our max amps at 100 amps. That'll be more than enough. Our frequency, we're gonna be at 120 hertz. That's the default setting for the machine. Our balance is at 35% electrode positive. No downslope, minimum end amps, 10 seconds post flow because we have 100 amps max. 0.4 seconds pre-flow and a 35 amp start. All right, so those are gonna be our constant settings today. The only thing we're gonna change is the balance. Let's run a bead and show you what we got. All right, so on this run, we were running 35% electrode positive. It's kind of a general setting for me. It works good on new material, works good on oxidized material. It works really well. You get a little bit wider cleaning zone than you would at a, at a lower EP, but you get a nice shiny bead out of it. So you can see in the arc shot, I'm running the pointed tungsten. At 35% balance, it's a nice mix between cleaning enough to get a good weld, but also enough to protect the tungsten. So I keep a nice point the whole run. I think we've, we've done three passes now with that same tungsten. It looks exactly the same as when we put it in the torch. All right, so here's the weld we did with 35% balance. You can see we've got a nice, pretty tight etching line. It's real smooth, it's not jagged, it's not all over the place. We've got just a little bit of pepper in the weld because we're running some pretty dirty plate today to, to really highlight the, the difference in balance. Um, but other than that, we got a nice shiny bead. It's pretty clean. Now that we've seen what 35% balance looks like under the hood, let's head over to the whiteboard and we'll take a look at what's actually going on. So before we get into explaining what our balance is doing, let's talk about why we have to weld aluminum on alternating current. So with alternating current and aluminum, your electron flow is going from the base material up to your tungsten and then coming back down. When it's coming up towards your electrode, that's electrode positive. What that's doing is it's blowing off the oxide layer on the aluminum. Aluminum has a very thin oxide layer that melts at about 3,500 degrees while your base material will melt at about 12 to 1,300. So that's why we have to use AC is to get that oxide layer off the top so we can melt the base metal and get good penetration. So now that we understand why we have to use AC on aluminum, let's take a look and see what's actually going on with our waveform to better understand our adjustments. So that first bead we ran was with 35% electrode positive. You can see here, we're spending about 35% of our waveform on our electrode positive side and 65% on our electrode negative, which is our penetration side of the waveform. This generally will give you, with a nice grind on the tungsten, will give you a small, stable ball that's very consistent for the length of your weld. All right, so the next run we're gonna make is with 50% electrode positive. What this will do, it's gonna ball up our tungsten quite a bit more. We're gonna have a wider etch zone. The arc's probably gonna be a little more unstable. So you can see our waveform, we are gonna be 50% electrode positive, 50% electrode negative, Okay, so here we have our run at 50% electrode positive. Right off the start, you can see the tungsten's taking a lot more heat. The heat's rising up the tungsten. As we move along, you see it starts to ball up pretty quick. The tip becomes unstable. It kind of dances around. We get a little defect in the weld there. It settles out. We got a lot more etching as we go along. The arc's a little more unstable. So you can see how much the tungsten's already balling as we get through this weld. Uh, here in a second, we're gonna show you an arc shot with a second run where the tungsten really starts to ball up. So you can see with the tungsten balling like this, if you wanna keep a nice tight arc, if you're doing precision work, you're gonna be making a lot of trips to the tungsten grinder to keep that nice tight point on your tungsten. All right, so here's another look at our 50% balance run. You can see right in here, this is where in the arc shot, the tungsten tip became unstable. It kind of jumped off to the side. It actually made a defect here in the weld. My hand position never changed, but the arc shot off the side of the tungsten as it became unstable. And then it kind of rebounded here. We got a nice clean run. You can see that our, our etching was almost 
almost double the width of what we were at it with 35% balance. So with 50% balance, if you're trying to do a lot of precision work, you're gonna be making a lot of runs to the tungsten grinder to keep a nice tight point on your tungsten. So now we've looked at 50% electrode positive. Let's go back to the board and look at 20% electrode positive. All right, so here we are looking at 20% electrode positive or 20% balance. You're gonna notice we're spending a lot less time cleaning, spending a lot more time penetrating. So we're gonna have a dirtier weld that's gonna be a lot easier to, to blow out. Our tungsten is gonna keep a nice tight point and our oxide line is gonna be greatly reduced. All right, so we just got done with our 20% electrode positive run. You can see that this whole weld, it's very grainy. We've got a pretty consistent pepper right down the center of the weld. Even our etching line here, it's not white like it was with our, uh, our 35 and our 50%. You can see here the oxide is not coming out of the weld. It's actually just sitting right on top. So this, what this is doing is we're getting a lot less cleaning action, so we're, that's why we're seeing this graininess in the weld, and it's also a lot dirtier. Okay, now that we've ran a couple passes with each uh, balance setting, let's take a look at the tungsten. So here we have our 35% balance, and all these were uh, a blunt tip or trunciated tip with about a 30 degree grind. So here's our 35%, our 50% balance, and here at the end is our 20%. So you can see we've got a slight deformation at the tip on the 35, pretty good sized ball on the 50, and the 20 is pretty much as ground. It didn't really affect the tungsten too much at all. So now that we looked at the tungsten, let's come over and look at the beads. So here we have our first run at 35%, nice shiny bead, nice white etching line. We have our 20% bead. You can see it's very grainy. It's got a lot of pepper in it. The etching line's even dirty. It's still got oxidation in it. And then at 50%, still a nice shiny bead, very clean, but our etching line is very wide. Now that we have a better understanding of what our balance settings are doing, hopefully this will help you dial in your machine for your application. I'm Jesse McCollum, brand ambassador for Everlast. You can follow me on Instagram at mccollum.weldfab. Till next time, weld mean, weld green.